if you stopped Earth and you weren't seat belt buckled to the Earth, you would fall over and roll 800 miles an hour due east. It would kill everyone on Earth. People would be flying out of windows, and that would just be a bad day on Earth. Rotation is one of the Earth's most essential features we all take for granted. This feature is necessary for the proper functioning of many things on our planet. If this spinning suddenly stops, it could devastate our fragile planet. From the climate to the oceans, and even the smallest living organisms on Earth, nothing will be spared by this catastrophe. But is it possible for the Earth to stop spinning? How soon before this happens? And how exactly does this threaten our existence on this planet? Join us in this video as we look into how something terrible is happening to Earth's rotation. And no one knows why. The Earth's rotation and revolution are its core behavior. This blue giant revolves around the Sun once every 365 days while rotating around its axis. This rotation takes 24 hours. A stop to this rotation will severely affect our lives on Earth. But before we look into that, let's start with the impacts or consequences of a halted revolution around our Sun. If the Earth stops making its rounds around the Sun, it could very well mean the death of all living things. You see, the Earth's rotation keeps the Earth in orbit, holding back the Sun's gravity. It is similar to how some can run or ride motorcycles on walls without falling. The speed and momentum applied in such actions cancel out the power of gravity. Immediately you halt while running or riding, gravity acts, and you crash. The same can be said for our Earth. If it suddenly stops, our planet will crash into a raging ball of fire. I'm sure you know what would happen if our Earth were engulfed in the burning yellow ball of plasma. It won't take up to a minute before everything on our planet burns and disintegrates into nothing. Even if the Earth somehow miraculously resists being pulled into the Sun's core, a sudden stop of its rotation could still be very consequential. Currently, the Earth revolves around the Sun at about 107 kilometers per hour, covering a total distance of 2.6 million kilometers daily. By the 365th day, the distance covered equates about 940 million kilometers. Thus, if our planet suddenly stops spinning, the Earth would experience a sudden overload acceleration or push. To put it in perspective, imagine driving in a sports car at top speed, and then it halts at once. Unless you have a seatbelt on, you'd be thrown out of the vehicle through the windshield with such force that every bone in your body could break once your body crashes onto the ground. Now, imagine that scenario again, but this time the Earth as the sports car with no seatbelt. A sudden halt in revolution would instantly destroy many things, turning them into dust. All humans on Earth would be propelled forward with a speed of about 7.9 kilometers per second. That's about 20 times the speed of sound. Getting propelled forward with such velocity would be more than catastrophic, depending on where you are when the event happens. Anyone in a building at the time of the Great Halt would be shot out of the roof at that speed. Those in open fields would get shot right into space. Finding yourself in space without oxygen is one of the worst ways to die. But wait, that's just the first cosmic velocity. What happens if we get propelled at the second cosmic velocity? This second cosmic velocity, also called the escape velocity, is 11.2 kilometers per second. This is the speed the Apollo 10 spacecraft had to attain to reach the moon so fast. If our bodies are pushed at this velocity, we'd probably get ripped inside out, with the pieces disappearing off the Earth into some distant part of our galaxy. And so, we'd all become some space debris aimlessly revolving around a star or planet. Speaking of planets, our Earth will not be able to survive such sudden halt and acceleration overload. Such tremendous force would break the planet into many pieces, unleashing its core. Heat and magma from the Earth's core will spill out into the cosmos, probably affecting the nearby planets in our solar system. It would be a once-in-a-lifetime spectacle, but no one would be alive to witness it. What if the Earth's revolution doesn't stop suddenly, but gradually? A slow, decelerated stop in the revolution may seem inconsequential, but it still isn't something you should wish for. It could even be worse. A slow deceleration would mean that our planet would slowly circle in on the sun along the ballistic curve. As the Earth slows down, 
the gravitational pull from the sun would become stronger and draw it into itself, thus reducing the radius of orbiting, as if it is deorbiting. This will continue until we finally get to the sun itself. As we approach the sun, we'd suffer greatly from its heat and radiation. The Earth is currently about 150 million kilometers from the sun. Our Earth will become unbearably hot at about 70 million kilometers, as the surface temperatures would exceed 212 Fahrenheit. That's about 100 degrees Celsius, the temperature of boiling water. Now imagine the whole Earth, including the air, is that hot. No one could survive on the surface. We'd all have to run underground. But even then, our underground bunkers will need to be equipped with cooling systems to shrug off the heat. But all this will be in vain when the temperature rises to 1,000 degrees Celsius. Nothing will survive. It would be a typical planetary extinction and then planetary destruction in a giant yellow ball of fire. This is what awaits us if the Earth stops revolving around the sun. But then, what about its angular rotation about its axis? Would it be that bad if our Earth stopped rotating around its axis? Well, if it happens suddenly, then we'd have similar results as when the Earth stops revolving around the Sun. However, things won't get annihilated or shot into space, but they'd be broken in multiple ways. There'll be an acceleration overload of approximately 47 G since the Earth spins at 460 meters per second. G here stands for G-force, which also means the force of acceleration due to gravity, the common unit of which we know as being 9.8 meters per second squared. Everyone on Earth will become heavier. This overload will increase at the Earth's magnetic poles, and it is enough to cause the planet to collapse on itself. In this case, multiple earthquakes would break out in every part of the world, as if something suddenly hit the Earth. But the good thing is, that the force won't be strong enough to send you flying into space. The worst that this sudden push can do is throw you along the Earth in the direction of its rotation. The Earth rotates from west to east. This is also why the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. And so, this sudden halt will push humans, animals, objects, and buildings eastward. The force would be strong enough to send people and objects flying to faraway distances, it's very unlikely anyone would survive such an impact. Only those who live in the Arctic regions would have the highest chance of survival as they could land on ice or icy waters. Also, the overloads in the Arctic and Antarctic regions won't be so intense due to their positions north and south of the equator. Besides earthquakes, flying objects, and humans, there would be severe tsunamis. Think about the deadliest tsunami in human history the Sumatra Tsunami of 2004. Now imagine something of this magnitude happening in various places across the globe. The tsunamis would be a direct effect of the strong winds that will sweep the earth due to the sudden halt, giving the waters a lot more power to move. And so, the 1,338,000,000 cubic kilometers of water on the earth would produce waves so high that the world has never seen before. Not only the land and water would become unsafe, the air would also suffer. All planes and birds would suddenly receive a push. They would rush forward with a speed of 1,100 miles per hour due to the angular momentum imparted upon the air. This force would make any plane or bird crash or break. It would drag planes flying in different directions westwards, leading to the same outcome, instantaneous destruction. Humanity only stands a chance of surviving if the Earth slowly stops spinning. In this scenario, humans, buildings, structures, and other objects would survive. Tsunamis won't be much of an issue. But you see, even if the Earth somehow halts without affecting us or our seas and buildings, there would still be many problems. The Earth's rotation is as crucial to our existence as the oxygen we breathe. If humans are to survive on a non-rotating planet, we'd have to evolve somehow, or maybe invent something that would even the odds. If you think such a thing could never happen, or that we would never get to such a point in our existence, think again. The deceleration and seizure of the Earth's rotation is not just an assumption, it's happening right now before our very eyes. Research has confirmed that the Earth's rotation gets slower every year, and even though it's hard to notice, our days are gradually becoming longer. If this continues, 
A time may come when a single day on Earth will last over 200 hours. Eventually, this rotation will stop altogether. The greatest benefit of the Earth's rotation is that it allows every part of the Earth to get sunlight. The sun is our life-giving star. When the Earth stops spinning, only one side will face the sun. The other side will be completely cut off. This is similar to the way our moon faces the Earth. Ever heard of the dark side of the moon? Well, when D-Day comes, we'll be talking about the dark side of the Earth. If you've been wondering why our planet is decelerating, it's due to tidal forces. Tidal forces originate from the gravitational influence of one body in the cosmos on another. For instance, the ocean tides we see on Earth directly result from the gravitational attraction of the sun and the moon. Under our moon's gravitational force, certain points on the Earth's surface that are closer to the moon are attracted more strongly, as if being pulled away from the Earth. This causes a deformation that can be easily spotted on the surface of water bodies as tides. Water is the most affected because, unlike solids, water molecules are loosely connected. Thus, as the moon exerts its gravitational pull, our planet's water level rises on the side closest to it and the side farthest from it. This is why you see the tides on beaches vary. In some places, you'll rarely even see the water level up. But in other places like Pensina Bay in Russia, the height of the tides can reach up to 9 meters. On special occasions during the new moon, when the moon and the sun line up in the ecliptic plane, the tides on this beach can grow up to 12.9 meters high. So, in essence, these tidal forces are causing some drag force or torque on the Earth as the friction waves rise, fall, and beat against the shore. Thus, our Earth is experiencing friction. Similar to how a ball spinning against a wall of water would slow down, our Earth is slowing down gradually. With all this, scientists have discovered that every century, one Earth day lengthens by 1.5 to 2 milliseconds. Going by these numbers in the next 200 million years, a full day on Earth will be at least 25 hours. And in the next 5 to 6 billion years, the Earth will complete one day's rotation at about the same time as it revolves around the Sun today. By this time, the impact of tidal forces would be pretty much negligible. This is because every system in the universe aims at achieving equilibrium. By then, the Earth must have synchronized with the Moon. All planets and their satellites synchronize, including Jupiter, which has different shapes and sizes of moons. So, in about 5 to 6 billion years, we'll have a permanent day side and a permanent night side on Earth. This is going to alter life as we know it. But not everybody would be altered by this. Those who temporarily live in the Arctic Circle already experience a night for half of the year and then a day for the remaining half. If you've ever been to Antarctica or somewhere within the Arctic Circle, you'd have a good idea of what it'd be like to have daylight all through the year. The Arctic Circle is an imaginary line drawn to indicate the areas where the sun does not set during the summer, especially on the day of the summer solstice. Also, the sun never rises here on the day of the winter solstice, which is usually around December 21st. Countries or places due north of the Arctic Circle, close to the North Pole, experience constant sunshine for about six months every year. Most people nickname these places Land of the Midnight Sun because the sun there will always be seen, even past midnight. One of the most popular places with this phenomenon is Svalbard, Norway. Here, the sun never sets from April to August each year. If you're asking why the sun rises and sets only once in these areas, it's all because of the positioning. The Earth doesn't just rotate on a straight axis. It tilts at an angle of 23 degrees at the poles. So, the areas closest to the poles, north and south, will see the sun for a long duration, once every year, before it disappears for the rest of the year. People in the southern regions of the Antarctic Circle also experience this phenomenon. Strangely, Inhabitants of these regions fare well even without sunlight for a long time. So, they should do fine if one side of the planet faces the sun, right? Wrong. You see, the Arctic and Antarctic circles are a small portion of the Earth. If what happens there were to happen on a global scale, it would shift the heat balance of our planet. There's no guarantee which side of the coin would be more favorable for humans. 
The side permanently facing the sun would be hotter with no chance to cool off, while the other side would experience extremely cold temperatures like the world has never seen. There's no nighttime for the part facing the sun, meaning that part of the Earth would continue to absorb heat from the sun and grow hotter day after day, year after year, till it could no longer hold. And the other part without sunlight would experience freezing temperatures and total darkness. Also, certain patterns would change. Strong winds would blow from the hot half to the cold half of the Earth. The nature of plants and animal species would change too. Desert and tropical plants would typically grow on the hot side, while plants that prefer to grow with minimal or no sunlight would flourish in the darker and colder side of the Earth. Most animals would have to migrate to the more favorable side of the Earth. Sadly, many plants and animals would perish. On both sides of the Earth, wheat plantations and many other crops would be wiped out as they won't be able to endure the constant heat and sunlight on the bright side or the constant cold and darkness on the dark side of the Earth. And so, Hunger would take over the earth unless humans evolved to somehow eat desert plants or invent a way to grow specific food crops in the hot desert side of the earth. There would be too many deaths for the planet to contain. If the heat or cold doesn't kill you, hunger would. But that's not all. Even worse things could happen if the earth becomes half day, half night. We understand that centrifugal forces act on the earth when it rotates, causing it to flatten at the north and south poles. This is why the Earth isn't a perfect circle. These forces also cause a hump to form at the equator, and so the Earth's diameter here is about 43 kilometers larger than it is at the poles. If rotation ceases, this hump at the equator would disappear, and the oceans would flow toward the poles. This inflow would cover the land mass in these regions and alter the arrangement of our continents as we know it. And so, we'll end up having one giant continent and two oceans on Earth. Places like Antarctica, Greenland, Canada, Siberia, China, and even the entire European continent may get swallowed underwater. As waters flow to cover these places, new land masses would emerge. And so, mountain ranges and plains would appear along the equator, up to 30 degrees north and south latitude. Imagine the lives that would be lost if entire continents suddenly get submerged underwater. Still, this isn't the worst that could happen. If the Earth's rotational speed slowed to 8,760 hours per rotation, its magnetic field would decrease greatly. The Earth's magnetic field is an often overlooked yet highly crucial feature of our planet. It helps keep the harmful solar flares from the sun at bay. If you know anything about the side effects of global warming so far on the Earth, just know things would have been a thousand times worse if the Earth had lost its magnetic field. In such a world, the radiation could rip your body inside out. The atmosphere would be intolerable for all humans. We'd have to live and thrive in underground caves where there is radiation. The only possible way to ease humanity's suffering would be to migrate to the small area on the border between the dark and bright parts of the Earth. This favorable line would be the only place where the side effects of both parts of the world could neutralize each other creating a perfect environment for living. However, it won't be possible for all human beings to settle down along this favorable line because the world population must have quadrupled by then, and a large part of the Earth's land mass would be flooded. Our descendants may have to move to another planet to start life all over. Maybe this is why Tesla and NASA seem fixated on finding proof of life somewhere in the universe. However, as disturbing as these facts may seem, there's nothing to worry about. It'll take millions to billions of years before the Earth finally slows to a stop. By then, we're already gone. At least we've seen it coming. Our descendants should be adequately armed to figure a way out when the time comes. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.